One of the things we've been talking a lot about lately is HTTPS and in particular some HTTPS anti-patterns where there is some presence of HTTPS on a website but it's just been implemented in an insufficient manner. So for example, recently I had a little video where we looked at what happens when you load a login form over HTTP but post to HTTPS. So the credentials were secure when they were actually posted but we had no confidence in the integrity of the actual login form. So I was able to manipulate that login form and steal some credentials. I've got another good example here I want to show you about mixed mode HTTP slash HTTPS. And in fact, I found an example which just demonstrates it perfectly. And what I'm going to do just to show that there are no tricks up my sleeve in terms of the website itself is we're just going to Google for the Social Security Administration. Now, when we find this, we're going to jump over to the website. And when this website loads, you will notice from the address bar that it is just an HTTP website. No HTTPS, that's fine. This is just a public component. So no dramas there. Let's drill down into reporting fraud or ID theft. Now, when we start getting into the realm of fraud and social security numbers, obviously, this is a pretty sensitive piece of data. So SSNs are obviously a pretty sensitive piece of data, which is often used in cases of identity theft. And fortunately, the Social Security Administration provides a way of submitting a fraud report. Now, when we jump into submit a fraud report, we will see that we go off to an HTTPS address. Now, this makes sense because when we have a look at the sort of data we have on this page, obviously there's some pretty sensitive info. So looking up at the address bar, it is HTTPS. If we just zoom in there and take a look, it is definitely an HTTPS website. So that's a tick. The form itself is loaded over HTTPS. If we jump in and have a look at the source code of the site, we will also see that it submits to an HTTPS address by virtue of the fact that it doesn't specify HTTP. So there's a couple of forms on this page. This is the one we're after. Given that we're already on an HTTPS address, obviously this form action will also go to HTTPS. So it looks like the form has loaded securely and the form will submit securely. Let's have a look at what it actually looks like. So we'll jump down. We'll just fill out a couple of fields. So let's remain anonymous here. Let's go through and uh, today we can be john at gmail.com. Now, obviously, this is pretty sensitive data, and particularly when you consider these are people that are in a situation where they feel that they may have been defrauded, obviously, they're feeling a little bit vulnerable. So let's go and whack in a social security number, and we will just increment all the way up to nine, which is as many characters it'll take. And obviously, when you get an idea of the type of data you can see here, clearly, it is pretty sensitive info. So all that is fine. Let's just jump down to the bottom. Heap of info there, and we will say, I have been defrauded. Okay, now all of that looks fine. Again, we're on an HTTPS website submitting to HTTPS according to that form action. Let's submit and see what happens. And here we go. So this has not submitted to the Social Security Administration. This has quite clearly submitted over to my website. And in fact, it's submitted to this little data collection path on my website explicitly stood up to test vulnerabilities. As we scroll down, we can see all of the data that was entered there. So the email, name, last name, social security, etc., etc., etc. even the little message that we left on the text area. So how can this happen? If we jump back to the form, it will all start to make sense. And let's go back again to the previous page. And this time, before we click on that submit a report button, I just want to open up the developer tools and it's already on the console here. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Now let's go and click on submit a report. So this is important because what we see now is a whole bunch of red and red is generally never real good when it comes to reports on web page security. So let's just detach that and I'm just going to drag this over and maximize it so it's nice and easy to see. And what we'll see here is that we've got a whole bunch of warnings where it says HTTPS security is compromised by and then we've got an HTTP address. So what's happening here is we've got an HTTPS website that then embeds content over HTTP. 
Now, what that means is that you cannot trust the integrity of any of these requests that you see here that are HTTP. And by that, I mean that a man in the middle could have manipulated the content. That includes requests such as this guy just here. So what that Social Security Administration fraud report page does is it loads jQuery from the Google CDN. Now there's nothing wrong with the Google CDN, but when you load it over HTTP, you cannot expect that the content would not have been manipulated in transit. So let's take a look at what that might look like. We'll copy that address. We can get rid of the developer tools now. And let's open up that jQuery file. And we will just run that. Run, run. And here it is in Notepad. So this is just obviously minimized jQuery. All of that is fine. Let's jump right to the end. And here is where we see something that looks a little bit different. And we can see here right at the end of the jQuery file, I have injected my own script. And clearly what I've done here is I've referenced the report form, which is the one that submits the data that we just filled in. And then I've simply changed the action to post to my own website. So this is it. This is really, really simple. Now what's important though is how I've done this because certainly I have not had any ability to touch the website itself. Nothing has been compromised on the site or on the server. What I have been able to do is compromise the transport layer. So somewhere between that website and my browser, I have been able to manipulate traffic so long as it hasn't been secure. Now the way I've actually done this is the proxy that I'm using has injected this. So I'm just using a proxy via Fiddler which many people are familiar with for monitoring HTTP requests, but it does also proxy traffic, which means that when it proxies traffic, i.e. the traffic does transit through the Fiddler tool, I can use Fiddler script to manipulate that insecure traffic. Now, whilst I've used Fiddler proxy to do this, there's nothing to stop any other point along the line between the browser and the web server from doing the same thing. So we've seen it at the proxy, it could just as easily be done at the ISP. It could be done at any other internet gateway point. It could be done via a wiretap. So a physical device sitting somewhere on an Ethernet cable. It doesn't really matter where it could be done. The point is, is that when a website does load data insecurely on a secure page, this is when the risk occurs. Now the fix in this case is really extremely simple. And if we go back and have a look at the source code of this particular page, we will see where everything went wrong. So somewhere in here we have jQuery, and here it is, and we can see that that jQuery has been embedded over HTTP. All we needed is an HTTPS right there, and this problem would not have existed, at least not with the reference to this particular jQuery library. Now the final thing is, I only managed to get Internet Explorer to do this by turning off one of the built-in security mechanisms. And certainly if we go through to security, and we go to our custom levels, and we go down, 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 down. And we find where there is the ability to display mixed content warnings. And we turn it back on the prompt, which is the default. We'll save those changes. Let's refresh that page now. And this time we see that only secure content is displayed. Now, depending on the browser and depending on the version, it may either block the content altogether which could of course break functionality on the page if it's dependent on that external script, or you may get a prompt. So for example, in Internet Explorer, you used to get a prompt. Now the unfortunate reality is, is that we know what many people do with security warnings. They try and get them out of the way as fast as possible. So really the onus falls back onto the website. We cannot trust the browsers or the individuals to do the right thing, and indeed to even know what the right thing is when they get prompted with a mixed content warning. So that's what the risk is. And that's why if ever you see a website that does have a mixed content warning, it really is a serious security issue and it simply should not be there. So shame on the website.